Brought to you by NetSparker, the developers of the only false positive free web application security scanners, enabling you to automatically identify vulnerabilities and security flaws in all your websites, web applications, and web services. NetSparker scanners are available in two editions, NetSparker Desktop and NetSparker Cloud, the enterprise-level online scanning service. For more information, visit their website at netsparker.com forward slash security weekly. This segment is brought to you by Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Visit, or rather email, consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to request a quote today, because it's pretty hard to visit a, an email address. You can usually. try. Usually you visit a website and send we, email. I think there's only one way to find out. But if this you could visit an email address, you might end up at John's house. <laughs> that might be kind of cool, Maybe. actually. So. <laughs> this segment Your tubes, is, you just got to fit in the tubes. You got to fit in the tubes. This segment is also sponsored by the Sands Institute, the most trusted source for computer security training certification and research. Visit sands.org to learn more. And by Tenable Network Security, the creators of Nessus, the world's best vulnerability scanner. Jumpstart your security program today and evaluate Security Center CV, the continuous monitoring solution, <coughs> which has Nessus in it. Visit Tenable.com for more information. <coughs> you don't say. Welcome back, everyone, to Security Weekly. We're ready. I, I got a feeling this is going to be a little saucy. It might even be a little thirsty. <laughs> This whole it's getting thirsty in here. It's thirsty. Oh it's gonna God. get thirsty. What is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> Just riding in the streets. They're getting thirsty. They're getting thirsty. I'm telling you. Yeah, I learned something new every day. Larry, I read an article about sniffing and tracking wearable tech in smartphones, and it had to do with um, monitoring and recording Bluetooth low energy signals transmitted uh -huh. by many mobile phones, wearable devices, and eye beacons, including. The iPhone is eye beacons like their term for like I Apple stuff that begins so with an I that's trackable or so is yes. eye beacons. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, it's okay. actually Apple's technology. Is that in the Urban Dictionary as eye beacons? Yeah, Maybe. I don't, I, I don't to. know. But it uh, it is a relatively open standard, something amazing from Apple uh, that uses Bluetooth low energy for doing uh, basically indoor location tracking, mm -hmm. uh, I, amongst a, a host of other things as well. But it's uh, it's pretty neat. It's based it's based on Bluetooth low energy. People actually purposely use Bluetooth low energy yeah. to track people where they go. Yeah. Like Disney is rumored to have in their Magic Bands Bluetooth, Bluetooth low, low energy, energy to track people where they go. Yep. Whether that's done anonymously yep. or not. Well, right. It's definitely not anonymous. I mean, you, you it definitely could be, though. I. It, but the point is... You, the sh you shattered my <laughs> glimmer of hope, not Kevin. I want it to be anonymous because the anonymous data would both protect my privacy and help Disney make for a better Disney experience for everyone. I just don't think that's going to happen. But, <laughs> but, but if it's not anonymous, Paul, it could help do the location tracking and create a better, better personalized experience mm. at Disney. See, but that's the key. could it help find my kid? <coughs> Does it work in real time? The, the, the actual, the, the, the bands themselves, I haven't ripped one apart, but I, I, have. I have heard. Is it active RFID? It is. Mm, no, it has to get close to the reader before it comes back. That's how the RFID there ship There is a battery power. in it, but the, it's it, unknown sort of what they're doing. Yeah, so the yeah. Wired did a really fantastic article when this first they came get out. Get out! But, but oh, they, they didn't, <laughs> they weren't able to actually tear the gear apart because it was all done through anonymous interviews. Oh. And what they were saying, some of the stuff of these, the actual bands themselves, I mean, they're talking, uh, being able to read them up to uh, 45 or 30 different feet away. Right. So, which, so which they could find so a lost kid. So yeah, theoretically, yeah, you could find a lost kid. Uh, yeah, although, unless you start talking about some of those really large open spaces, then they'd mm -hmm. have to wander someplace to closer to wire one of those readers. Yeah. And yeah, because people and then, buildings and stuff get in the way of wireless. But they, they have it, the, the example they gave in the article was that you could go to a restaurant sit down, and if you'd gone through the whole Disney experience, they'd know exactly what dish to bring to your table automatically. It would just show up a few minutes after you sitting down. So they have it down to not just Now, see, I give feet, up some of my privacy for it. Just like security that I have to give up in order to have convenience, I have mm -hmm. to give up privacy in order to have convenience. Mm -hmm. and people are usual. Well, but not us, potential, but potential like other people are more likely to give up their privacy because unlike us, they don't understand maybe the full ramifications of it. Yep. And a certain percentage of the people may change their mind. Mm. Yep. Maybe not. Maybe they take the convenience. Yep. And, and <laughs> well, you know, the <laughs> question that always... Go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. sorry go ahead. But no, the question ahead. always comes in is, who's gathering the data? 
what are they doing with it? How long are they keeping it? You know, when the privacy stuff hit the streets, gosh, we're going back 15 years, the FTC did a series of hearings on privacy. Just to show you how old it was, uh, they allowed us to record it. I believe I have it on cassette tape someplace, Damn. like in the storage uh, facility. Wow. Is that like but eight track? It's like eight track, <laughs> but you could use like a pencil to rewind it. Oh, but, yeah. but here's the, but, but what always stands out on my, there was a person who talked, you know, and at the time, what do you say? Maybe he had 10 gigabytes of data, right? Maybe it was something bigger. So we said, well, just delete it. And he went, whoa, 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 whoa. no, I, I'm not going to delete it. I'm not sure how we can use it, but we're pretty sure it's valuable somewhere. So, so the trade-off that comes with these things, whether it's Disney doing it or now we're talking about credit cards doing it, I, I'm less concerned about saying we're going to trade off privacy or security to get convenience. The broader implications and questions are, how are you storing it? What are you doing with it? What are other people going to do with it? What rights do I have to it, if any? And, and I use the word right specifically, but call it whatever you want. And, and I, I think that's where the problems come in. I think that there are people who are pretty well intentioned and then somebody else goes, oh, I can use that data to do this, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask a, a, an opposing question. Uh, I have an easy pass that I got when I lived in the Northeast. I still yep. use it when I travel. It's in my car. Yep. I don't run around shielding it all the time because I'm not terribly worried about it. I've never seen a case yet where somebody got a ticket because of their easy pass. Which, oh, by the way, every time you go through a toll booth, they're taking pictures of your car and your yep. license plates anyway. Yep. So some of these concerns that, that we worry about that I think are valid, I'm not saying it's not a valid concern, but the question I have is, are we seeing any of these implications actually come to life yet? Um, so I don't know about like penalties and that type of stuff, but there was some stuff that happened um, not all that long ago where it was proven that New York City has a bunch of Easy Pass readers all over the city that they're using to read Easy Passes without doing any billing, i.e. So they're just tracking, um, doing you, tracking. monitoring. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're actually volume. embedded all over the highway system. Yep, and, and so that they can do like traffic measurement and yep. uh, and all of that type of stuff. So yep. absolutely. Yeah. So then, and doesn't that that leads us into that question? Then it says, well, wait a minute. When I signed up for an Easy Pass, that was so I could go through toll booths, get a discount, and move through them faster, right? And now they have the high speed lanes. And sometimes it's weird if you're in a rental car or you don't have that ability, and you're like, why am I waiting in this line at this point? That's nuts. I, I don't want to be able to do that. So, so I get those trade-offs, but then all of a sudden somebody says, oh, wait, we can track that data. We can do these things. We can, well, wait a minute. Is that what we signed up for? And by the way, I'm sure if you read the fine print, the fine print says if we can come up with something smart, we'll do it. And uh, you, you know, if you don't like it, well, that's, that's too bad because you've signed up to it. Yep. That's where I, I think we've got some opportunities in it, but, you know. I don't know. I think it's interesting. That's for sure. But then we go look at things like the Stingray devices, and we go look at the ability just to do simple triangulation and everything else. Uh -huh. And I think the more salient question is, what what is privacy today? And and I, where I'm coming around, to my own opinion is, I think the definition of it's ch shifting. And we used to conflate or confuse anonymity with privacy. I mean, all you had to do was ride the train in the New York City a couple, well, a decade ago. It, the conversations you'd hear were, were astounding, but people thought they were anonymous, so they didn't particularly care about it. Well, w what we're really doing now is not so much about the privacy, it's we're taking the anonymity away. And I think that that is, is, I think it's interesting. And so the way to get back to it then is to start to give control of that data back to people as opposed to corporations. And, you know, by the way, good luck. But <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Santarcangelo. Yeah. See, a couple more drinks in. San That's Santa Cangelo. Santa Cangelo. <laughs> I want to I talk about the TSA. Can we talk about the TSA? Fuck yeah. <laughs> I, I think day. it. I think it, wait, wait, wait. Is this a story that involves math? Math? Yes, it involves math. Sorry. Just a full <laughs> wait, warning. Wait, wait. Warning. I, I was gonna We're say doing it. math. <laughs> yeah. Science, math. Yeah. Drink up. <laughs> yeah. Drink up. <laughs> We're going to do math. Fill your drinks up. Man, you so, some of that. I mean, no, you don't, I don't, you don't need anymore, up. Please. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> Every year, the TSA blogs about the weapons and explosives it prevented from getting on airplanes. Um, so <coughs> what this chart that has numbers on it and stuff says is basically charts out the number of firearms discoveries over the year. So in 2005, they discovered 660 firearms. Fast forward to 2014, they discovered 2,212. And it slowly increased. I mean, with one exception, there was a slight dip from 2006 to 2007, but it slowly increased over time. And 
<clears throat> what Robert Graham from the Erratic blog says is that this is not uh, more people bringing on firearms. This is not the TSA really preventing more firearms from getting on. It's just they got better at detecting them over time. Uh, I'd argue they detected at the same rate. There's just more people carrying firearms that forget them in the bag. You think so? They're just given more opportunity to find them. It's certainly a plausible a explanation. Yeah, mm. I think it's a fair assessment. You ever want a good laugh? Oh, just go to the TSA blog. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah. An inert anti-tank projectile <laughs> yeah. was discovered in a check bag at Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> they have a serious problem with apparently inert grenades, too. Who? Who? Yeah, no. <laughs> I, yeah, it, it does make you shake your head when you look at that stuff. You know, I, I, there's a lot here to talk about, but I, I feel uh, I want to point something out. We're going to use this and we're going to shake our heads appropriately. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to point out how the head of the TSA got uh, got booted. And, and, you know, my side story is probably promoted um, to some other position uh, someplace else. But, you know, what's interesting is I spent a lot of time now working with people around measuring stuff that, in security. And I like to talk about measuring what matters. And, and what the TSA is doing here is actually um, smart for them and, and uh, insanely frustrating for us and most anybody who does numbers and looks at this. They're counting. They're counting things. They're not providing context. Mm -hmm. They're showing you a trend based on counts with absolutely no, no context. context. Yep. And so as a result, they can say, look at the chart. Look at how good we're doing. By the way, we need more funding and more people. Which, hey, guys, we're doing this in security all the time. Mm -hmm. Look at all the things I covered. By the way, I need more funding and I need more blinky light machines and more people. Um, we need better context. Tell us what, what you're measuring. Tell us why. Tell us how you know it works. Whatever, right? Because yep. what did we see? Their, I mean, their failure rate is uh, not surprising you know what, to us. What, what, but, like, yeah, but they were just saying they came up with a uh, study or, or a paper just this week that was saying that what um, it was uh, like a 95% failure rate on detection for TSA agents. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. do we have... Uh, do we have a 95% failure rate? The other thing is that they have a 95% failure rate, but how many planes in the U.S. get hijacked because of that 95% failure rate? But You take that see, to a computer security thing and you have a 95% failure rate, you're going to have all sorts of credit card numbers. Well, you'll be out of business. Mike's you know, talking, about, talking, about, Mike's talking talk. about context that I think makes sense. Yeah. Like, what's the percentage of uh, people who have something in their bags they're not supposed to that really just forgot that they were in there. Yep. And a lot of these items are perfectly legal to carry in your bag in many states in the United yeah. States. Yep. Um, so they're not really preventing you know, harm from happening on planes because they're not publishing the statistics on <coughs> what was the intent of the person. Right, right. They have no way of profiling yep. people. Just like when we were in California and I bought those two bottles of hot sauce and put them in my carry-on bag right after 9-11. Yeah. And I... Put him in my carry-on because I didn't want him to go in my suitcase because I didn't want to get hot sauce broken. You didn't want pressure or the, breakage or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Or break, but didn't want yeah. hot sauce in my bag. So I put. We love in. baggage handlers, but have you ever watched <laughs> from your seat on the plane how those yes. bags are yes. uh, every, handled with every, love? Every <laughs> time my rolling Pelican case comes un, undone, <laughs> and the only thing that's holding it closed is the TSA lock. Mm. Yep. So I started putting a luggage strap on it. Guess what got lost the last time I was the flying? Luggage the luggage strap was lost. Came off. That's awesome. With no Accident TSA inspection. Ac accidentally. <laughs> yeah. Destroyed. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's one of those things then. But what I find fascinating is if we then go ask people who don't look at the things the way we do and study it, how do you think the TSA is doing? Most people say, oh, it's good. So you like doing that? No, I don't like it, but it's keeping us safe. They right. have been phenomenal at pushing forth the message that these actions are protecting us. I think Dan, so. I think well, safe also requires it's context. It, it's interesting, Mike, is uh, Robert says, he points this out because in the end, safety is an emotional thing rather than logical. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, you, I agree with that. Yeah, I thought it was an interesting article. I mean, do we do the same thing in information security? I mean, we could yes. we could publish the same chart, though. We could say, you know, in 2005, we detected this many attacks. And in 2014, we detected this. Look how many more attacks we're detecting. So you need to keep giving no, no, us no. money see, so we can keep detecting see, attacks. See, our charts would be better. You know why? 
because they'd have clickable links that would point to malware. A lot of holes. Yeah, and, and yeah. I've seen a lot more pivot tables. And Pie if graphs. you've ever done this, yeah, you know pivot tables are, are really the bomb. Pivot like that's, tables rule. That, that's that's like maps. dropping glitter, right? I mean, right. It, it makes you thirsty. Bring a pivot table. <laughs> yeah. Thirsty. Boof. Makes the thirsty people feel okay. <laughs> So, so, so let's go lessons learned. The TSA is not going anywhere. Uh, the guy in charge of it probably just got a promotion. They're going to get budget for more people because they need to. Um, and um, we're still going to try to do the same thing with th different results in our own organization. Well, yeah. Well, how many of us have gotten through TSA with something in your bag that you forgot that they didn't detect? Uh, uh, every, everyone on the, on the you, panel tonight? If you nod your head right deny. now, you're committing a felony. Really? Or, wait, I don't wait, know. Say I'm that again. Are you? I'm just oh. gonna throw that out there. Say if you admit it, if you admit it, you're committing a felony. Sure. Hmm. Or did no, you already I'm commit the felony? Or you're admitting to yeah, a felony? Admitting to a felony. Right. No, I think it depends on intent mm -hmm. again. But hey, uh, I, I'll tell you what. I'm actually since I never want to be the example. It, I actually now have like this ritual where if I take a bag that I've used locally for a while, yes. I empty it out completely and then repack it. Before but we I, all forget. We all forget. There's always that one hidden there's pocket. A, well, there's, yeah, and there's always that one time where like, you, you have a you Leatherman. You put your weed in there. <laughs> in the battery. <laughs> in, the, in the diesel battery, apparently, to screw up top. But so I, so I, I had a Leatherman on my bag. <laughs> you had, yeah, who hasn't you lost had, a Leatherman you, because it's You TSA. had a Leatherman, right? Because I kept one attached to my bag, and I was diligent, like Mike said, about taking it off every time I went to the airport. Mm -hmm. And that one time... Mm -hmm where you're pressed for time and you're, you're packing your bag in a hurry and you leave and you get to the airport and you're like, why is TSA going through my bag? And you're thinking like, what did I forget to take off and it doesn't hit you till he's like, what's that? I'm like, fuck crap. Yeah. yeah, and you're like, you've never seen one of those before, dude? Uh, dude seriously, <laughs> never? Right. <laughs> yeah, seriously, because I can buy a whole lot of them off of eBay. <laughs> Do you have confiscated over there. stuff? Can I just grab one on the way back? Yeah, I mean, that's... they should but they should work with a, a wholesaling place or weapon distributor. They shouldn't sell them to the public. They shouldn't destroy them, in my opinion. They should go to a reputable contractor that puts in for the bid or multiple. I think they do sell it off. Sell they them do. to them, but and then public auction. Let, let that person take responsibility for selling the weapons in, mm. in their various things. Because obviously, it's a lot of responsibility to be able to sell all of those weapons, firearms. There's tons of laws, federal and local, <laughs> that you yeah, have to well, abide by. But some of the stuff, like knives and that type of stuff, yeah, um, there the, are they they like do uh, TSA auctions. They do yeah. auctions. That type yeah. of stuff, okay. and people buy them, and then they re they resell them on eBay. But I got gotcha. you. Leatherman's like I understand, but I'm looking at a a graph here on the TSA <laughs> blog that was the number of firearms discovered in bags last month, and this is a fairly long list, and it's broken out by weapon type, caliber, along with if the round was chambered. Now that's kind of a concern. Well, if you're concealed carry, you're probably carrying with a chambered round. Most of the time. Yeah, that's fair. This is that specifically in carry-on bags. So yeah. it's not oh, on the body, I so see. it's not concealed. Well, it may have been concealed. Oh, down here, you can have concealed carry in a bag. Yeah. yeah. Ah. In other states, in not the Northeast, but in the rest of the country, <laughs> in a lot of states, people <laughs> will people will carry in, in their bags. Uh, yeah. yeah. My ignorance of firearms is showing through. Yeah, plus keep in mind, if, if it's a revolver uh, and it actually has bullets in it, it's considered chambered. So True. True. And and you a lot of people who conceal carry still conceal carry revolvers for a lot of reasons. Yep, they so. watch Dirty Harry. That and so lucky? reliability. Because <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, they feel left out. You, oh well, so we got a we got a Soho router oh, problem. God. So that's good. So I feel okay with this. Oh wait wait uh, wait, wait wait wait. If we've got <laughs> where's a, our WordPress got, vulnerability? I was gonna say we've got Soho router thing. We've got where's the word? Hey, I make sure we keep us honest. I make you know we gotta hit our <laughs> we gotta hit our things every week <laughs> and point out the obvious. Yeah. Um, so this one is particularly interesting because on the Soho router thing, I because I was thinking today, um, a lot of people will dismiss the router vulnerabilities as something that people don't have to fix because well. Well, they have to be able to get to my router over the internet, so therefore I have to have remote administration enabled and not have a firewall enabled on that port so people can remotely get to my, um, my router. <laughs> and that's not necessarily true if there are certain conditions which these vulnerabilities exist in most Soho routers that authentication bypass is present, mm -hmm. that cross-site request forgery is present, which mm -hmm. is probably the most popular bug in web interfaces on Soho routers. Mm -hmm. The other constant that you need in order to exploit these is the attacker has to know the IP address. 
And in the unique case of Soho Whoa. Records, we know or could probably guess the top three very easily in 90, JavaScript. 192, 190, 192.168, 0 0.1, 1.1, 1 .1 or... Those are the two most popular. Yeah. Well, and, and some now are going 10.10 10 yeah. to start. Yeah. But still, same, same pattern. Same That's easy to figure out. But if those conditions exist, which <laughs> and oftentimes they do, the attackers can exploit these even if your remote administration is turned off. They basically trick someone into loading a page, mm -hmm. which, whoop. Now, it, it, it's key that there's a big differentiator here. Authentication bypass, bypass plus cross-site request forgery is a dangerous combination because it means I don't need to know the password of your mm -hmm. router. Right. I just need to get yeah. you to click a link or load a page, and then I can magically and, change and, settings on and your router. And no one ever clicks on links or loads pages on the internet. Right, no. exactly. Uh, so huge, huge websites have banner ads that again. are loading malicious code. That happens all the time. It's happened for a long time. So that's my concern. And as I was thinking about that, like literally the next article I read, which is somewhere in the show notes, is uh, a malware that does that. <laughs> yeah, somewhere in here. Uh, yeah, and that's not terribly surprising. Look, I, I, I'll tell you, you guys have definitely, I mean, I've paid you the compliment publicly, but I'll, I'll say it again. I, I come away so much smarter as a result of these conversations. And, and I, I freely admit, I kind of looked at it and went, yeah, I got it, but they're cheap devices, they're not meant to be, blah, 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 it's good enough. And, and over time, uh, your efforts, Paul and, and uh, Larry and, and Kevin and, and when uh, Carlos chimes in, okay, I look at it differently now. I mean, I, all right, I get it. This is, this is kind of interesting. To your story number two, Paul, an exploit kit de 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 dedicated you. to cross site request forgery farming. Thanks. I can't find it in my own my own stories. Yeah. So this researcher did did work to basically do exactly what I was thinking. I'm like, this would be really evil. Like, if I were an attacker, I would totally be exploiting this, right? Because it's it's the silent killer. The authentication bypass plus cross site request forgery. If I can find that in enough routers, I can change your DNS settings so your DNS server points to me. That's the typical attack. Mm -hmm. Try and discover that on the router. I was just going to ask, so, so, all right, I'm the user. It, what, how, am I even going to notice that this changed? Nope. No. Not unless, I mean, you did something <laughs> stupid that would cause yeah, that's an ad to, to, yeah. call, to, to right. cause something that your normal internet usage would trip you up. Yeah, or, or the, the DNS server that you're being redirected to is really slow. Yeah, or, yep, or dies like or something. Yeah. Yeah, but it oh man, I mean it's trivial to scan the internet now. You just it's, have to be as good or better than their ISP's DNS server, well, which is insane. Yeah, much. that's pretty. It's easy. pretty <laughs> low. Yeah. It's a pretty low bar. <laughs> if that's what so I'm the saying. bar is is low. The bar is low. Yes, I think this is really dangerous. I don't know. I mean, Soho routers for a long time. This has been an awful problem. At a no long point. time. And now like, you have these. This ISPs goes back to like early Linksys routers that were first coming on the market in. What, Larry, 2002, 2003? I think 2003 yep. I yep. have seen public uh, yep. exploits published yep. for these very same vulnerabilities. This nothing's has been going changed. on a long time, and nothing's changed. That's the frustrating thing for me is nothing has changed. The, the only difference now is the ISPs are handing these boxes out, so you're mandated, mandatory well, they, to use them. <laughs> or, <laughs> you, you know, that's the marketing spin around. You have to have this box. It has to have remote <clears throat> management for the ISP to get into it, and there's your vector in. Yep, and that is yet another vector. So what you do if you're listening to this show uh, is you call your ISP and you tell them you want to bridge the router or bridge the, the cable modem, and they'll do it for you. Yeah, but that's just going to put all your machines directly on the Internet. Right. Which, no, no, no. Then, then you put then you put your own wireless router on it that oh, you like, yeah. and, and you and you make sure it's oh, not one yeah, of the things yeah. that if we you, talk about. Yeah, I see. You bypass theirs. To, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah they're, always, just, they're just they're just a bridge. They just they drop off. They terminate it at your thing. And typically, level one gets confused. Level two says what? Say, so just give me a level three tech. I want to bridge the router, and they go, oh, okay. And and then they do it for you, and they're fine. They're happy with it. Yeah, I got an Ethernet via Larry's suggestion. He's like, if you push Verizon hard enough, you got to stay on them because they'll keep questioning it through the whole process. Yep. But if you keep coming back and say, no, I'm a paying customer. I just want this. Just do it for me. I had to say that three or four times in the process. They'll come give you an Ethernet handoff. Yep. Oh, you know what? I, nice. I actually had that. You know, there's a, there's a company down here in Myrtle Beach. It's a, it's a collective uh, in the county. And if you can get it, and it's not in the neighborhood that I live in right now, but it was where I lived before. It's blue fiber, and it terminates out at a pedestal at the street, and then they run a Cat5 cable right into your house. Mm -hmm. And it, it is freaking fast. It's awesome. It's cheap. It, oh, man. I, like, it's one of those things now when I move, I'm like, okay, do, do you offer the blue wave? Because if you do, <laughs> you look better to me than the other people do. So, yeah. No, I, I think there's stuff there. 
I, I thought I was reading this article on The Onion, but it turns out this is a real thing. After several false starts, Microsoft is planning to support <laughs> SSH in Windows, and the company's engineers will also contribute to the SSH project. So which, which of that is more exciting, the first part or the second part? <laughs> both, really. The first no, I know part they're both exciting. No, well, the first part's more but exciting But you know, you know it's, it's so exciting, but it's about 10 years too late. It's yeah. a little late. Well, we've had Slowly. Putty for how long? Putty, 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 Putty. Yeah, this is a, a, an SSH server, though, right? Where Putty's what? the client, right? Uh, 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 no, no SSH client? I thought it was a client. Is this a client or is this a server? It's probably a, good question. a server. Who's running this show? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I, I think, honestly, I think it's server. I really do. Really awful. Yep. With no client to connect to it, you've got to use a third-party tool to SSH to your own Windows Done. servers. Hate it. Yeah, so apparently they tried to do it in PowerShell. It didn't work out so well for them. Carlos, go write us as an SSH server and client in PowerShell. That's right. I guess that's why he's not here tonight. He's busy. Ah. He's already at work. Yeah, no, it's both. It looks like it's both. Sorry. Hey. Just a little bur blurb there. A little bit better. Big year for like Microsoft. I'm sure someone will correct us if we're wrong. We can you know what's interesting when you say that, uh, Kevin, about a big year for Microsoft? I, I don't disagree. I agree. But it's been a big year for Google, too. I mean, Google is pushing a lot of these security changes pretty aggressively. Apple has come out, and they've made a lot of stances on the privacy side of stuff. Yeah. I mean, Tim Cook in the last week or two, is he's been pretty vocal about some of that. Uh, Microsoft is, is really getting into the game. I think this is good stuff. I know that we get frustrated sometimes about the change of progress. I was having that discussion on Twitter today. And the thing I point out sometimes, and it's probably good to remember, is that we have a very specific set of experiences in a field of view. And, and therefore, sometimes we want a, a change, and we want it you know, yesterday, please. Uh, now, some of the things we're talking about that take a decade, that take two decades, I think it's probably fair to say those feel a little long. But gosh... These companies are, are really starting to step it up, and they're forcing some changes. And uh, they're not agreeing on how to do it, and I actually think that's awesome for us because they're going after each other now to, to do it better. Mm -hmm. We'll all get better as a result. We don't have a choice. We're going to have to to keep up. That's great. So do you think that means that we need more branded vulnerabilities? Absolutely. Uh, heat maps. Brand vulnerabilities, um, <laughs> logos, he he logos. In infographics, theme songs, yeah. infographics. We need tables. infographics. We HTML5. Actually, you know what? I want the I want the next vulnerability to have some glitter, or I'm not even going to the point. Wait, wait, wait. Are you throwing I, want, I want the next vulnerability to have its own dance. <laughs> Kidding me? Uh, it needs so to be thirsty. I, so when I so when I pop that thing on a pen test, I know what dance to do. <laughs> Get on the floor, smack that. It's gonna be a new dance. <laughs> Hitting up brands. Here's your it, chance to do the hump. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, apparently, me, Open DNS did a study. No okay, way. they did a study. Okay, um, is there a heat map? Of all, there probably is a heat map. This would actually be a good application yeah, of a heat map. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so Open DNS examined internet requests um, for more than 70 billion of a day from over 50 million consumer and enterprise users in 160 countries. Uh, they also conducted 500 uh, consumer surveys and 500 IT security <coughs> professionals and found that the industry verticals with the most IoT devices operating within their computing infrastructures were. Does anyone who doesn't have the article pulled up already care to venture a guess? Which story number is this? Because uh, you've got a couple of IoT ones in there. I do. This is story number 16. Okay. The industry vertical with the most IoT devices operating in it is Kevin. You just read it. So. No, I, I didn't. Okay. Wait, uh, what I'm what just would your to guess read it. be? Healthcare. Higher education. Healthcare oh. was on the list, but was not number one. After that, managed service providers and healthcare. Respectively, huh. Kevin. Very good, very good. You huh. were in the top three. I was going to say healthcare as well. Well, healthcare, I, I think, is a nice choice because. It's gonna, if I walk into the hospital with my Fitbit and it connects to the internet or something like that, it's going to show up on there. And they have a lot of, obviously, transient traffic. I was also so. thinking of all the medical devices. That are now yeah, I was going to say, I, I think the healthcare stuff's yeah. coming. Yep. Well, they said what kind of devices. So um, by looking at the fully qualified domain names, FQDNs, in case anyone was wondering what the acronym was. It's a heat map for that. <laughs> where uh, they were 
Does anyone want to venture a guess what the top devices were that were found? I'm looking at it right now. Uh, you're, you're, all, you're all cheating. Let me, you're let all me cheaters. Yes, let me see how accurate I can get the list. But here. you know, the first one surprises me. Yeah, I was surprised yeah. by that too. Samsung, Samsung smart, smart TVs. TVs. No, blows your mind, right? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I think that's. Well, I mean, here's I guess, the part that's blowing my mind. Just to be clear, uh, I only the other day realized I have one. Yeah. And uh, and I went, hey, I really am enjoying this series I'm watching on Amazon Prime. Uh, it doesn't work on the Apple TV. Uh, the freaking Roku. I guess I can move it and set that up. Wait, I got one of those smart TVs. I yeah. wonder if I can connect that to the internet and make that work. By the way, the answer is uh-huh. Yep. Now, think of it in higher education. It makes perfect sense. Absolutely. Students yeah. come in. They in all bring dorm. their TVs. Yep. A lot of them are Samsung smart TVs. Um, I, mean, well, yeah. I, I got to give it to Samsung. Here's why I bought it. This, this is, this was it's a, smart. A I don't have to be smart. My no, TV is smart. No, I bought it because it was cheap. It is oh, cheap. I bought it oh. Costco. Quality. So and, we, I, and it was the size I wanted at a price I was willing to pay, and I went, well, that works. Let's do it. So, yeah. like, sounds like it, some propositions that are made on a <laughs> Vegas street corner. Yeah. It reminds me of this joke about a puddle. Oh, I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> so, uh, a puddle. These, these smart TVs. Are yeah, Larry's got a joke, but I, I couldn't do it right. you got to practice. Now. These smart TVs are kind of terrifying when you start looking at what they're doing. Wi-Fi enabled out of the box that will start no, purging. I'm not, I'm not looking. I'm don't, just using don't See, I, I, have one of these, cameras. I have one of these Samsung smart TVs. It's a little bit older, though. And it doesn't have Wi-Fi. See, I actually... It ha has I Ethernet. Ethernet. Yeah. I, ha I had spent a, a very long time looking for a TV that was not Wi-Fi enabled. And this was last year. Jeez. Every single floor TV they had in... in, in it was all Wi-Fi enabled. All Wi-Fi enabled. They're all Wi-Fi enabled. All have the, the microphone, the camera embedded. We're going to have them. one here in studio. I bought one today for the studio and to put gonna it behind threat. us. It's going to be on my heat map. And it's going to be uh, on your heat map. IoT devices in this room. That's right. Heat map. I can't wait to see the logo you come up with. It's going to be awesome. It's really just a display like a goatee like image. I was just going to say, oh, goatee. <laughs> Larry's going to goatee. I'm really glad it. now I don't watch the live feed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, the second thing that was most common were Fitbit wearable devices. Yeah. Webcams from Dropcam and Logitech, Western Digital MyCloud storage devices, and Nest devices like, it says, and Nest devices like smart thermostats. You mean smart, smart thermostats, thermostats like yeah. Nest devices. devices? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, now that we've successfully picked apart this article and pointed out all of the technical inaccuracies like the nerds that we are, Larry, let's go to one of your stories. All righty. Uh, getting back to... I didn't put any stories in. What? I Did had you... stories last week, but this week I didn't. I don't know all right, to... so you're ready to watch uh, Michael... Santa Cangelo go away? Go away. Oh, yeah. yeah the, I Sky am. the Skype denial Bring service. Bring it on. Let's see if it works. Skype denial service, Mike. But, by the way, just so we're clear, it's, it's going to crash on its own. So, go ahead. <laughs> it's a Microsoft product. Of course it is. I thought this was a feature. <laughs> it was. It is. It is. But it's a. Yeah, you know what? It's a feature. It's called getting everybody to upgrade their Skype. Mm -hmm. Oh, the issue does not affect Skype for Mac. Bring Aww. it on. Bring it on. No, because we're going to do it against the one here in the studio that's running on Windows. Hey. Oh, but so yeah, we, don't, we actually don't update that. It's air gapped. <laughs> it is not. Yes, air it's air gapped by Wi-Fi. Well, it's a Samsung TV right there. It's probably bridging that air gap. Yeah, so yeah. all you have to do is instant message. <laughs> yep, excuse instant, me. Instant Show message me user. Do they have to click on it? No. It just have to receive it. Yes. It is an HTTP colon forward slash forward slash colon that's URL. It. And it barks, something. And do it you barks. need something after that, or just colon? Uh, that's as far as I know. I'm going to start trying this now. And it like, and like it goatee. Barfs. It just needs the colon. Yes, it just needs the colon. <laughs> and it barfs, just like when I saw goatee. Um, but even better, <laughs> even thirsty. even better, that it crashes Skype. And when you reload Skype, it reloads all of your message history. Uh, <laughs> it does it again. You have to uninstall it and reinstall it from scratch. Oh, that's oh. awesome. Oh. Boom. Yeah. Oh, I love it. That oh. it's, kind, it's kind of like, it's kind of like that iOS messenger bug thing that's been going around lately. <laughs> but what happens if you send it from a machine that's vulnerable? I have no idea. Does it? We got you some got, testing to do now. We got some testing to do now. Because I, I can safely, I can safely send it from my Mac. Yeah, yeah let's do it. I want to see if it this works. Is a, this is great. not on mics, yeah. but <laughs> and on the other Skype. I know. <laughs> yeah. So did you see what this one that, that? That, uh, that now Facebook is supporting uh, Tor and PGP? 
Really? Yes, and someone went and signed Facebook's PGP key with ASCII Goatsy. <laughs> 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 and they screwed it up. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. You can, you can scroll. This is a motherboard uh, uh, article. You can scroll down the page and see what a, a properly formatted yeah, Goatsky and ASCII, ASCII looks, like. Goatsy looks like. Oh, yeah, because yeah, that's kind of like a... Here's a good one. Oh, that's a better yeah. one. Yeah, this, is, this is for Adrian Lamo, which I thought was also yep. pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, that's a much better. <laughs> yep. That's awful. It is Stop awful. Stop looking at that. <laughs> it is awful. <laughs> anyway. Oh, that Skype, boy. That Skype DOS is cool. That yeah. is one of the coolest denial service attacks I've seen in some time. Yeah, you got to uninstall it. That's awesome. <laughs> it's it's almost like the one for the, the you saw the iPhone bug. I recently. heard about an iPhone bug. Okay, recently. so yeah, there's this. They, 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 they fixed it on an updated version if you have an updated version. Yeah. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Apple maybe they're re- they, maybe they're removing it at the server now because oh, it's going to go through be. the server yes. first. Ah. Yeah. Censorship. But yeah, the the one for Apple messaging is uh, pretty interesting, in that uh, it once you receive the message, it basically causes your phone to go into a, a reboot loop. Let me see if I can. Someone tried to send it to me. And you don't have a an Apple device. I do have an. Is Apple that device. an iPhone? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. The case on it, I thought it might have been. Blows your mind. This looks so different. Yeah, there we go. That's what it looks like. For all of our premium I, viewers right now, they can see yes. what I'm seeing with my GoPro. I, say, I can't see it, so does he have glitter on his case? He does. Yeah, it's it's one of those sparkly ones with the <laughs> fake yeah. crystals and everything on it. It's awesome. You got it's the just like a bunch too, of right? random sparkly rainbows. Yeah. UTF-8 characters, and apparently gotcha. that would crash. It's awesome. Uh, it, it also came with the word kill chain, so I thought that was pretty appropriate. <laughs> kill chain. <laughs> I really don't. That have needs a better logo now. The kill chain. chain's got to get updated. Yeah. Actually. Oh, that, unless you do. All right, hold on. I wanted to talk about not mm. Docker Shocker Blocker. <laughs> I want to talk about story number eleven. Boardrooms are becoming. I was you were going to go there. Yeah. Is this really true? Are boardrooms becoming more security savvy? Yeah. The, there's um. There's some footnotes. To you this. like so, I, so you like that? You agree with this? I only put this in here so that I could ask you about it. I know, and I, I love you for that. You. you <laughs> You didn't need to do stories. I got you covered. I know, man. You Kevin had me too. this week. I, I Kevin, too. I, I had you covered I this. I appreciate it. Someone's this week. got to drink this whole thing. <laughs> you, you, you nice. For me. <laughs> yeah. Um, here's the thing. Um, I've, I've, when I go work now with the CISOs and even CIOs, security is top of mind. The board is top of mind. Um, you know, the thing here, though, that, that I, I want to be careful about looking at this, and, you know, I, I grabbed the, the full report the other day. I have not had a chance to but read Mike, through it on, yet. But, on their mind and savvy are two totally different things. That's exactly correct. And and the, the thing to this that's, you know, I, I've looked at some of the stuff that's come out of the Cloud Security Alliance and some other places, and what they're also deciding is, hey, you know what, security really matters to us, and those guys in security they're just kind of screwing it up. So how about we go ahead and bypass them? So, you know, the fact that we're going to sit around now and go, yep, they get it. They want us there. I'm going to give a briefing. I'm going to tell them how it is. Um, th- th- here's the caveat. Yep. Do they want to hear from you? And if they want to hear from you, right? And Paul, this is one of the things you and I are tackling uh, in the near future. So what's that leadership look like? What does that mean when you go brief them? Uh, I keep seeing this advice, you know, Talk, make it really simple for them. Talk like they're your mother. Guys, don't, that's, that's how you're going to get booted. That's how you're not going to be perceived as a leader. That's horrible advice. It's, it's nuts. I mean, what it means is that people want to know, but keep in mind too, the boards and executives, they don't necessarily have the same goals, perspectives, or outcomes. That's going to be interesting as we learn how to navigate that. I, I think it's good. I think it's true. And I think that uh, not to put more pressure on people than, than we need, if we don't learn how to have those conversations. I, I was at an event the other day, and the CISO was explaining to me, he went to the board, was talking to him, and apparently he broke a cardinal rule and he asked a question. And I laughed, and I went, what, kind, what the hell kind of rule is that? The board member, these are smart people for the most part. They're on the board because they're smart, they've got experience. If they ask you a direct question and you don't understand why they're asking the question, say to them, okay, why are you asking the question? And, and then figure out how to answer it. Or be honest and say, I don't have an answer for that yet, but I'm going to get you one. And, you know, I mean, there's not, it's not a, a mysterious thing. What it means is that the directors now realize your name getting splashed through the paper is not good for business. But I, I'll dare you to go show me where. I mean, you know, 
Target. We like to throw that around still. Go, oh, CEO left. Uh huh. How'd that expansion into Canada go? How'd that polar vortex yeah. go that year? Oh, by the way, how are their numbers now? Oh, they're they're raging. They're doing great. Yeah. Okay. Next. So so here's the thing. Are are the boardrooms becoming more interested? Yes. Are they becoming more security savvy? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm seeing? Uh, more boards are putting on former C CIOs. And they're putting on more people that, that had technology experience in companies over the last decade or two, and, and they're paying more attention to it, and they're asking better questions. But they're also now concerned with how do we, how do we accelerate our pace of business and reduce our, our risk exposure, and they're looking at it with a much bigger lens than we've got and a much bigger field of view than we've got. So, yeah, I think it's happening, and I think it's great, and I think one of the things that we're going to focus on is how do we communicate this in a way that, that – is beneficial for them and for us. Hey, Paul, I just texted you something important. Yeah, I don't have my I don't, my phone's over there on the table. Oh, it's okay. It's rebooting. <laughs> probably, it's probably, <laughs> is it rebooting? It's okay, it's that would be awesome. It might be on fire now. If you dos, go ahead, you can get you can grab Frank. If you dos my phone during the show, that'd be epic, dude. That's extra that'd points. Be epic. Here you go. It'd be epic. I never got it. It's a good password. My um. That could be because uh, Larry. No, I did sells get it. Nice. <laughs> I do. No, it didn't crash my phone. Censorship. Dude. Sorry. Oh. Try harder. Huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will. Just keep sending it. <laughs> All right. What else do we want to talk about? <clears throat> Anyone? APT, but what? Eight. No. Oh. <laughs> Oh, really? <sighs> <laughs> Wait, is APT Potato Cannon available? I want that one. Oh, that one's gone now too. We'll do there. I think I put a shocker cracker over the Brandon vulnerabilities. So, do our brand? I mean, here's the one, Paul. You put in. What? Yeah, uh, it's also interesting to me. Cyber, Cyber insurance. insurance. I knew you. Were, I put that one in just for you too, Mike. Actually, you put it in twice. I did. I put it in <laughs> twice. So I felt it was it's so an article important. so nice. You got to list it twice. Had to yep. put it in there twice. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, basically, what it says is, uh, okay, so it's a young market, and um, you know, do your homework. Um, not a surprising tagline, uh, but I. I don't know. I, I like it. I mean, if, if you give me the choice, I was having this discussion on Twitter today. You give me the choice between uh, a government-imposed sanction on exactly what we're supposed to do. By the way, how's that working out at the IRS? How's that working out now at, uh, was it OPM or somebody just admitted today a breach of all the classified systems uh, and security classifications? Oh, that, that'll be fun. Or, or do you want to start actually letting the insurance industries look at this and figure stuff out? I think it's, I think it's a great I think it's a great strategy, but but here's here's my piece of advice because I actually have been thinking about this um, for a while. I don't know how he gets any thinking done. He's like got all these conversations going on on Twitter, and in my head, you should see the it's not 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 good. Here's the thing: if you want to do cyber insurance, which which is a cyber. which is a fair strategy, cyber uh, of some some the question you need to ask when you're filling out that questionnaire, if it's not clear to you, is you, you need to say. Cyber. What does what does this mean, and how will I demonstrate to you that I've been in compliance with it? <laughs> and if, and if you can't answer that question, then then you need to partner with your legal team or whomever, and and go work with the insurers to clarify that. But here's what I think happens over the coming years that gets clarified, and and we'll start to see the stuff that that emerges. And and here's what I really like about where I think it can go. I hope my optimism may be coming through here. If I'm an insurance company and I can start tracking, hey, companies who do this have less problems than companies who do these things, so we want to encourage more of this to get lower premiums uh, or whatever, That's I, I, I don't see that as being a bad thing. So the fact that now it's young and you got to rush it, yeah, but by the way, a lot of the big companies are rushing into it too. They don't know what they're doing. So it, it's going to be some interesting um, churn for a while and, and it'll go to the courts because it's contract law, right? I mean, you're... Yep. You're contracting for something, and, and they're going to try to exclude you based on things that you've done, and you're going to try to get stuff included because of things that they said, and um, give it a couple years. But uh, to me, I think this holds promise as being one of the fastest levers to advocate for change in our industry. That's very pro prolific, Mike. Um, sorry to change gears on you, but I realized that I, I overlooked a story that I wanted to cover on the show. I'm not sure that we might have mentioned the Silk Road story in the past. I'm not I'm sure, sure we, we ever have. I'm we, sure have. we have. I remember we Jack had, we had mentioning to have. it. 
it, it has implications uh, certainly for Fourth Amendment rights uh, mm -hmm. in this country. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's interesting that the press is now dubbing the term dark web, which I thought was just a CSI cyber thing. And if you think about it, this so-called cyber dark web cyber has been around since the internet was invented. Essentially, in fact, I would argue it was around before that. In fact, I when would it wasn't argue even, when there wasn't even a web. I would argue it was around the days yeah. of phone freaking. Yeah, it mm. was dark gopher. I, I think I think it's dark it, dark gopher. But I think it has its uh, <laughs> history. Links. The beginning of that is phone system. <laughs> absolutely, right? I yeah. absolutely. Go, that, yeah. go go read so, uh, or listen to exploding the phone. So, but I, I hate that there's like well, the, they're making it seem like the internet has created this dark web when. That type of thing has always been around yeah, since, the, the, the since it was first communications in this world. Well, yeah, I mean, world, what about right? the dark pitch network in New York City that nobody still talks about that's yeah, still it, very active? Okay. So anyway, so we've completely trashed that term, which <laughs> that was my goal, was to completely trash that term. Mission accomplished. Now I want to talk about Ross Ulbricht. Is that Ulbricht? Ulbricht. Ulbricht, Ulbricht. sorry. Ulbricht. Ross Ulbricht, um, who was recently, a couple days ago, Yep. His yeah. sentencing came down, um, was sentenced to life in prison without parole for operating, a, I call it underground. Uh, my term would be underground. underground. Yeah, it would be an underground site for selling illegal drugs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gray, gray market, black market. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so the website was called Silk Road, as many of us know, and if you follow the case. Um, one of the things that came into question in this case, and there was recently a documentary, I think it's Showtime or something that there's, I was There's watching. actually a few documentaries. The one I was watching was, was pretty good. Now, what's interesting is Wired has really stepped up to defend Ross. Their mm. reporting on this is not unbiased in any way, shape, form, or fashion. <laughs> they are not shy about <laughs> taking a side on this, which yeah. to me is, is, doesn't bode well for their journalistic integrity. But having said that, I think everyone's going to have an opinion about this case. You know, I certainly do, and I'm kind of torn, right? Mm. I like the Fourth Amendment. Fourth Amendment is good. Fourth Amendment's yep. important. All the amendments are important, right? Including the Fourth Amendment. Very I, important. I like the Fourth Amendment. I yeah. like silk. Se I like roads. That's I right. like drugs. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> but, I said too much. But on the other Back hand... To but on, yeah, on the other hand, he... I mean, he was building an infrastructure for people to trade illicit drugs, which yep. resulted in people dying. Mm -hmm. yep. I mean... Okay, it, he was the vehicle for which, I mean, people overdosed on their own, right? Right. But he was part of the uh, infrastructure that made those drugs available. Now, one could argue people can get drugs from anywhere, but it, then, then there's the whole argument is how, how does technology aid in things mm -hmm. like this? And there's just, there's a lot, I have a lot of conflict there, about this story. Right, Kevin, right. I'm curious to hear, yeah, and, and he, Larry and Mike, yeah, yeah. too. Um, but I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. I don't know if you, if you follow the story, Kevin. I, I, here and there, uh, it, it always seems to come my way no matter what. But he, he argued some pretty interesting things uh, in his defense that uh, he was not sh he wasn't denying the fact that he was running the Silk Road. He, what he was arguing for it was that he was offering a, a harm reduction service in the sense that people aren't going out to Another the streets good point. Yes. Another and good buying point in this drugs article. in, in right. a less safe environment. And yes. Yes. There was actually this pretty Every movie, right, there's the drug deal gone bad. Yeah, like in exactly. every movie, when every time there's a drug deal, you're like, all right, someone's getting shot. So there, there right? was a really someone's kind of die. interesting article uh, that spun off from this about how a group of users of the Silk Road banded together, pooled their money, and would ship drugs to a lab in Italy to have them tested. Mm -hmm. That way they were vetting the buyers. Yes. And then they'd come back and say, these drugs are okay. It's a good point. It's their good intentions shit, were to... Uh, Give people illicit dr or illegal drugs, but do that somehow more safely. It's a, it's a really, I mean, it, uh, yeah. And with, and with but like a lot of people argue, like my intent. That's exactly what he's, Ross's argument. My intentions were good. I was trying to make it mm -hmm. so that there wasn't the drug deal gone bad. This all happens anonymously, and people just send drugs to each other, and there's no drug deal where people shoot the other person, take the drugs and the money, right? Well, even though and he the, was apparently... I didn't realize that there was a vetting, the, the vetting there was some yeah. vetting process of the drugs inside of the system as well. Now that, they, that was user-initiated. User, user, uh, uh, it okay. has nothing to do with do that. With well, just think about that, right? I mean, what's, what's interesting to people like me when you look at these types of markets is without, without the thumb of the government on it, and I don't, I don't mean anything prerogative or pejorative about that. It's just it operates as a true market. So if you're a seller, how do you start to differentiate yourself in that marketplace? Yep. Well, I send mine to this lab. It's a, it's a valid lab. It's testing the purity of it. So you know, if you want your heroin or your Coke or whatever you're buying, you can, uh, you're going to pay me more for it, but I've taken these extra precautions mm -hmm. for you, right? So you're watching a real market at play. 
Um, and that's and that's all kind of interesting. Yep. And, and so, Paul, I want to come back to one of the things that you mentioned that, you know, Silk Road was a vehicle for th things to happen. You build it and they'll come type right. of thing. Um, and, and as part of your, your thing was that he built it, um, things happened on the site, people died as a result. Mm -hmm. I, I'd argue the same with Facebook. Facebook, well, yeah, was a, could, yeah. Facebook was a vehicle that brought people together to do something, and one of those somethings happened to be online bullying well, I and think it, online bullying. Yeah, the well, but I, the but I think a better, a better analogy, Larry, along those yep. lines is Craigslist and prostitution uh -huh. and all the people that died because they went, you know, go to hmm. with the board, whatever. Yep. You know? Here's yep. the difference in both of those cases, though. With, with limited exception, both of those companies, Craigslist and Facebook, when, when the government comes knocking, they go, yep, we'll give you what you got. Yep, we'll give you <laughs> yeah. the lecker, we'll yeah, give you the, the logs. True. Yep, we'll, we'll pull that anonymity back. Whereas Silk Road yeah. says, Whereas Silk no, Road, no, 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 hold on, the FBI had to hack into their servers. Yeah. <laughs> And right. that's the, where the Fourth Amendment issue Supposedly comes in. Supposedly did There's an alleged ha uh, FBI. Right. Yeah. They won't, they well, won't admit to that. They will not admit to that. But if you look at the case or at least watch the documentary, they make uh, the references to that, that that happened. And there was lots of articles about that when that, when that case was, yeah. was, was What happened. I find very interesting is that uh, uh, the reason Silk Road went down is because of bad OPSEC. Yes. He was, you know, the, he, he was an idiot. He, yeah. He, the, the, there's... No other way to describe how how bad his it was. Security it was, was. It, and it, it took a lot of digging on the FBI's part to, to yes. put all those pieces together. No. But it ultimately came down to bad. And it came yeah. back. There was a Silk Road too, and they took that down. Yeah. And now it's just kind of like blossomed into all these smaller well, the, ones, and they're just kind of playing whack a mole. This with a bunch article of we're, ones. We're, we're, we're referencing is about all people who were involved and started their own dark nets. Yeah. But what concerns me more is when a legitimate uh, drug cartel organization uses the exact same software and does this in a way that cannot be brought down. These yep. are people, individual people, standing up services. You talk yep. about an actual cartel mm -hmm. whose sole purpose is to manufacture and sell drugs to do this. They probably already have it built. I was going to say, guys, they're, they're already doing it. The, mm. Come on, the, this is you, you, this is not surprising. We're just not hip enough to know. Right, about apparently, it. maybe we're just not thirsty enough. <laughs> get out the glitter. We'll, we'll get it fixed tonight. Get well, out you the know, I, look, I, here's what. I, so I always like to separate things out, right? Because what, what I find is somebody either really likes what Ross did or didn't do in this particular case, and then and then we quickly go, well, but it was drugs and it was people. Okay, so let's separate that out. So so there was an illicit traffic, and and there was an intention to it, and there was an accessory, and maybe that's good or bad. But, but, you know, Paul, I like the fact you keep coming back to the Fourth Amendment on this because, you know, so, so now we're at a time, right? I mean, w in the United States, we've got a lot of discussions around surveillance and a lot of discussions around collection of data. And we're kind of back to saying, well, you know, if you have nothing to hide, then what are you worried about? And that's just an absolutely horrible perspective. Mm. It's not about nothing to hide. You know, I, 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 first of all, um, I am a supporter of the police and the FBI in, in a lot of circumstances and cases. Uh, I'm very fascinated with police work, and I uh, predominantly don't like uh, people with, with poor intentions doing bad things. But, you know, what, what I always find fascinating is that if you go look at the way that the, the Miranda rights are worded, um, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. And I've watched a couple of lawyers now explain very clearly that it's not that anything you say can and will be used in a court of law perhaps to exonerate you. It's the exact opposite. Hmm. It will be used against you. And so even if you have nothing to hide, the, the salient advice is shut your mouth yeah. and, and, and bring a lawyer in and follow the process. Even if you've done nothing because you do, there's so many variables that you're not sure what's going on. Yep. And so, so when you, I look you, at this – You admit that you farted at dinner one time on a Sunday. And that's going to be used against you. They're going to use that to tie that you farted in inappropriately to family dinner yeah, on Sunday. Yeah, they're going to show that, 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 that you're an yeah. animal that has yeah, yeah. no uh, – <clears throat> you know, whatever. So, so – and, and the point to it is it's less about um, police or government or anything else. It's, it's simply saying it's an, in, it's an interesting – it's a specious argument that if you've got nothing to hide, you should never worry about these things. And therefore, we shouldn't have encryption and we should have back doors and we should – Whoa, whoa, whoa. And so, you know, Paul, I think that, that you put your finger on the pulse here to say, wait, there is some Fourth Amendment stuff here. And, and, and there's some Fifth Amendment stuff here, too, probably, uh, if you go deeper into it. And, and it's an interesting discussion to say, wait a minute then. So because somebody can use something for a bad purpose, does that mean we shouldn't build strong, secure, appropriate networks? No. Bad people are, bad people are going to do bad things regardless. They, they don't care. And and so the answer is not to weaken it for everybody else. So I just I think it's I think it's really interesting. And I man, I'd I'd love to have more people comment on this and share some of their insights on it because yeah, his yeah. sentence was 
life in prison without parole. Well, it, this is the thing that I think that's kind of interesting, and it, I, I appreciate because I have not followed this that closely. Um, where, where you're pointing out that Wired has um, a very strong opinion on this, but what I thought was interesting, assuming that this can be taken um, accurately, but the quote from the judge, quote, for those considering stepping into your shoes, she said, uh, quote, they need to understand without equivocation that there will be severe consequences. So basically what she's saying is I'm going to make an example out of you yep, exactly. so that all yep. the other people understand what that's going to be. Um, yeah, I, I, look, um, history does not show that that's effective, mm. um, especially when the large percentage of people escape uh, capture and prosecution and the distance between, right, it's a, there's a sociologist named Gibbs that looked at this specifically in terms of law enforcement and, and essentially um, the severity of the punishment and the, and the absolute nature of the punishment both come into play. But if most people can get away with it and there's a big lapse of time between the time you get arrested and then the time that the punishment is served, the, the point is it, it is not a deterrent at all. So all this did was this kind of piled up on one dude, um, unfortunately, because he got caught. It, it's not going to deter anybody else. It, it, there's no deterrence. It, it, it just that feels a little lopsided. So mm -hmm. this has got three issues. The administration of law, the 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 need uh, for these types of technologies now getting cast in a bad light because of something very uh, uh, big, and then a particular person's use of these technologies to create something that fostered uh, what we morally consider in, in the world today to be bad. Wow. Yeah. So if you want to argue, just just remember to separate those three things out, and then just let us let me. I mean, if you want to argue with me about it, I'd love to learn. Just tell me which one you're going to take on. Mm. Yeah, because it says in the article that they specifically call out uh, Bitcoin and Tor mm. as being the technologies used to mask uh, the activities. Yep. So, yep. interesting story. Sp speaking of masking uh, stories, real quick, uh, yeah. HC Moore tweeted something earlier today that um, that you can actually get uh, prosecuted for um, clearing your browser history. Yeah, I, that's that's all I got oh, yeah. out of that. There's like a legal term for that, destroying evidence. evidence. Yeah, yeah. Destruction. yeah, but so that's that's the reminded me of a joke thing that I saw today that you know, obstruction of justice. Best friends don't go to your funeral. While the funeral's happening, they go to your house and delete your browser history. <laughs> 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 On that note, we're going to conclude this episode of Security Weekly. Thanks everyone for watching and listening. We'll all be back. Uh, next week and Larry take us out please clear my browser history over and out <laughs>